there is one major immersion problem that MMORPGs all have in common, and that is the immersion breaking mechanic of logging in and out. Before we jump into Spirit Relic's logging in and out mechanics, I want to discuss how this ties into a game's sense of reality, and I'll give examples as we go through these ideas. When creating a role-playing specific game, it's important to think about the world and game mechanics to keep some sense of reality. The game's fantastical sense of reality has the potential to become the basis for a player's escapism. MMORPGs are built around the idea of escapism in another world, and I believe the logging in and out system is an area where future MMORPGs can improve. Players have different levels of suspension of belief in RPG games. When a broken mechanic or a world-breaking moment occurs that is stronger than their tolerance, it can break a player's feeling of escapism. In fantasy movies, fantasy books, and single-player RPGs, the people who live in these worlds don't just pop in and out of existence without people batting an eye, but also none of these forms of media has a user logging in and out, which makes this disappearing act a unique issue for MMORPGs. While no one can stop someone from saying BRB or AFK, what games can at least do is find clever ways to integrate the logged in and logged out state into the world itself. Considering all this, new MMORPGs should start considering four things. 1. The transitional state to log out having a visual. 2. The state in which the player is logged out, and this can persist in the world or not. 3. The transitional state to logging in having a visual. And 4. All visuals and states make sense in the game's world. Simply put, new forms of MMORPGs should at least have a visual indication of logging in and out, and a visual indication of where players will appear when they log in. We also need to tie this into the character's world so it makes sense in-game. Some examples of logging in and out might be having portals appear on the players, or they turn into some kind of beam of light coming in and out. They don't have to persist in the world necessarily if logged out, but I think this would add a fun mechanic. In these instances, when players are logged off, the community can still see the character in some sort of an inactive state. But in the state, everyone understands that the logged off player isn't going to respond because they're logged off or inactive. Maybe the characters remain as a ghost or turn into a statue or an NPC. Now let's talk about an example of this in some random game idea. Just because this topic isn't discussed often in MMORPGs, I want to take extra care explaining these concepts and jogging your imagination before we jump into spirit relics. Let's use a random sci-fi MMORPG in this example. If you're playing as a robot in a sci-fi world full of robots, it wouldn't make sense if robots were popping in and out of existence without explanation. This would be your typical MMORPG setup. Players would have to ignore this and pretend it isn't a world mechanic. But now let's try to make this random game have a world mechanic. What if autopilot chips are built into every character's neural network, hardware, or brain, and logging off is activating this autopilot chip? Now, in the offline state, the players have predetermined responses instead of them typing or speaking their responses. Being robots with autopilot chips would create a reason for a character to act like an NPC. Visually, it could be that online players have green eyes and offline players have red eyes. Maybe red-eyed characters automatically make their way to a parked position in a storage garage. It would be up to developers if they want to remove the offline players from the instance after entering storage, and the garage isn't an area where online players can enter. Or maybe players can and can see some quantity of recently offline characters stored in transparent containers. Maybe a random player can be seen walking about in the garage and can be interacted with as an NPC. I just want to give plenty of ideas for those who are considering ideas for their own game development with this system. I still want to take this one step further, and that's the final step. And that is showing when the player is returning to the game and giving a visual indication of where they're going to appear. In our previous example, maybe when the robots are ready to leave the storage garage, large mechanical arms will come down and drop the player back into the game. Online players passing by will see the arms moving and will anticipate that a player is returning to the online state. Maybe they can see the landing pad for incoming robots, or maybe returning players can choose where to move the landing pad and the arms will deliver them there. Following the four rules listed earlier in this example is creating a much greater sense of reality. 
This is much better than players popping in and out of existence without explanation. Players can immediately tell who is offline and online and when players are transitioning on and off, and it makes sense in the world. We have completed an example of a full canon state of logging in and out. So clearly, players would feel more escapism in a world that had a deeper logging in and out system. They don't have to pretend that a mechanic isn't a function of the world. This system is part of the world. And while this does create more work, the current MMORPG system for logging in and out is not immersive and doesn't lend anything to the role-playing experience. In fact, it takes away from the role-playing experience. This novel concept will add a spice to new games that have been missing since the existence of MMORPGs. In my game design for Spirit Relics, I've established a full canon state of logging in and out. Keep in mind that Spirit Relics technology is generally a medieval fantasy, so we'll stick to that. As seen in the prior episode, both player race options are fire-based. Each type has a core, the torso for humans and the head for flames. The core has many magical properties, like being an inventory system. And when it's fed, it strengthens the player in the form of buffs. Throughout the game, the concept of the spirit is within many things, and the core could be considered the player's spirit. With it being fire-based, it will be visually and mechanically linked to fire. Thus, when the players log off, they'll turn into will-o'-wisps or otherwise floating fire sprites. Maybe this will look like the player's core or a compressed version, but I'm not too sure yet. I'll need to work with a concept artist to hone in on the visuals. But if I could stick a Poe from Tears of the Kingdom and a Firefly in a blender, I feel like that could be the look that I'm currently imagining. For now, Firefly is easier to say and illustrates the movement I want to achieve. So I'll stick with that for now and I'll switch back to describing it as a soul or spirit later. Just remember, I hope to visually add some fire-like elements into the design as it ties into the player's core. So let's dive into the four needs listed earlier and we'll dive into each of these sections in further detail. 1. The transitional state to logging out has a visual. In Spirit Relics, a 10 second timer occurs where the character is vulnerable to attacks. This is common in MMORPGs so that the players don't abuse the invincibility that comes with logging off. A magic circle will appear under the player. I'll need to work with an artist to determine what type of animation would appear, but the game would need some sort of an animation to help indicate visually to other players that the timer is counting down and when it is complete. I was thinking that some part of this magic circle could spin like a timer. The player community will see this magic circle under the player while the logging off sequence is occurring. In the case of disconnecting, the character will pass out. I would like a separate animation if the character is in motion when this happens, but the same standing one might work fine. The character will still be vulnerable for 10 seconds with the same magic circle below them. And then, in both cases, they will enter the logged out state and will turn into a firefly. 2. The state in which the player is logged out. The firefly will persist in the game, however, instead of being sent straight to a character selection screen or game menu, players will be redirected to the logged off screen of that character, which we'll dive into soon. 3. The transitional state to log in has a visual. When players return to the world, a different magic circle will appear. This one indicates that a player is coming back. The player can move this circle around in a limited area away from the firefly to choose where they're going to spawn. The magic circle will turn red if they can't and will turn blue or green if they can. I say either because I'm not really set on any specific visuals yet. Players active in the world can see this movement live. 4. All visuals and states make sense in the game world. The books, scrolls, and NPCs in the world will talk about the lore around this, but the player characters, the humans, and the flames are the only race that does this. It appears that their link to this world is weak, and there's something unnatural about them compared to the other beings that inhabit the realm. If you haven't seen the last episode, NPCs are bird-like creatures who walk, talk, fly, and do other actions like settle into buildings alongside humans and flames. They persist in the world always, unlike players who log in and out. Most of the creatures in the world also persist in the world, unlike any player characters. So visually, we have a species divide and thus a mechanical divide. Now that we have the basis for logging in and out, I want to talk about some mechanics and how this will visually impact spirit relics. 
If a player is interrupted during the logout sequence, for example, being attacked by a monster or otherwise, the logout sequence will continue unless the player cancels it by moving, performing combat, or interacting with items or pets. You're vulnerable in the logout sequence, so strategically it's a good idea to get to safety before logging off. If you are hit during your log off sequence, you might enter a weakened state, but players can still talk, text, and emote while attempting to log off. Some food buffs, if still active, can negate weakened states. With that said, food buff timers will continue at a normal pace while you're offline. But once offline, your character is in a paused status. There is no body to receive buffs or debuffs or attacks, but your flame is still burning in this firefly state. So it's burning through food and thus the food buffs you ate. While offline, everything in your inventory and on your character will be safe and not subject to any decay or timers, except in hard mode which we'll talk about near the end of the video. Logging out at a campfire or fireplace will give you a 6 hour buff when you come back. This buff gives a small percent increase to applicable buffs. You can stack this buff with selected perks if chosen at character creation. Some of which depends on if you're a type of player that wants to live in society, the wilderness, alone, or in groups of people. But all players, logging off at special areas like your home's bedroom, a room in an inn or hot springs, churches, or other resting zones will give additional perks and buffs. There are other ideal places to log out based on profession. For example, if a player wants to be a smith, sailor, or a church leader or a member, a smith could log out at their forge, a sailor at their ship, and a priest could log out at an altar. Many other professions will also have craftable themed mantles that they can log out at, and these will give the user buffs towards that profession. These items can be placed normally like any object, but can also be placed at special locations based on their type. For example, a sailor could place theirs at a bow of their ship, or a priest can place theirs at an altar, and so on and so forth. Visually, it would be commonplace to see fireflies over campfires and other fire sources like fireplaces, mantles, altars, bonfires, and furnaces. If many players log out in the same area, there will be a max limit to how many fireflies appear on the screen to help avoid visual clutter. All fireflies will be the same color. Logging out at a fire will be the most basic resting mechanic. Later on, we can dive into how to increase this resting mechanic when players create things like tents with sleeping areas or rooms with beds, and how these resting buffs stack with or without mantles. Technically, players can still log off anywhere, they just won't receive any special perks that come with being more selective about it. We talked a lot about what other players see when you're logged off, but what will you see? Let's talk about the logged off screen. When logged out, the screen will go dark, so you can't see much. You'll also see your character's firefly, which will glow. You'll see a small area that your glow has illuminated. So you'd be able to see if you logged out at a campfire, mantle, altar, bonfire, or even a gravestone. In the logged out screen, you can't hear other players speak or type. And you can't type or speak either. You can't hear monsters or environmental sounds either. I don't want to give a full view here because in this bodiless shape, I want that feeling of being disconnected or unconnected with the world. In this screen, you can do a few things, like return to the game, exit to the menu, close the game client, or fiddle with options. There are other actions available, but we'll go into that later in this video. We won't go into the rest of these I just mentioned, as they're self-explanatory and are in your typical MMORPG games. If you try to move, the magic circle will appear, which indicates you're finding a location to spawn back to. You can escape this action by canceling, and you'll remain in the logged out screen. If you're responding in a hostile area, for example, maybe you logged out in the wild and a monster claims the territory while you're away. While logging back on, your magic circle indicator will appear hostile in theme. To give a fleeing option to players, there's an adrenaline buff bonus so you can run without losing stamina as long as you don't enter combat. This is to help players get out. Monsters don't typically nest near settlements, properties, and camps with lit campfires, and there are other craftable things you can build to keep monsters at bay, or to lure them to other locations, or other strategies you can perform to keep your settlement or character safe. Also, I need to account for moving vehicles like wagons, ships, and party members. 
Since the player is now perpetually in the world, we'll need to design mechanics around things that are moving, or else a player will log off of a moving ship, and I don't want a character to come back into the middle of the ocean where they would just die. If you log off on a vehicle, your firefly will follow it. However, if a mantle is crafted for it, players will be stored in the mantle. But only players with proper perks will receive buffs for it. Again, if there are a lot of fireflies attached to a vehicle that doesn't have a mantle to store players, the game will simplify the visual quantity of fireflies following the vehicle for visual brevity. Returning to the game while the vehicle is in motion will show some kind of visual indication on the magic circle. If the magic circle is moved off of the vehicle, it will take on a different shape that indicates you will be jumping off. I'm also thinking this could be different arrow indications that can stack if it's moving and you are also choosing to jump off. As I develop spirit relics, I'm actually very interested in not creating a perfect system, but rather a system that works in context, where things stop working if it can result in some drama I feel that this would lend to some unique personal stories and social dynamics. So brace yourself for a crazy concept. In the logged out screen, you can toggle your logged off state as collectible or locked. Locked is your default setting, where nothing can really alter your character while you're logged off. If collectible is toggled, you can choose options of who's allowed to collect your spirit. This could be friends, guilds, or your own alternate characters in the same server. As a collectible, an allowed player can pick up your spirit or firefly state, and the spirit will follow the character who collected them. If they decide they're done moving or rescuing someone or a friend, they can drop them off somewhere. You can still toggle this off at any time at your logged off screen and return into a locked mode. Or you could turn off specific people, but remain collectible overall. With all that in mind, at your logged out screen, you can also create a SOS or rescue quest. If you are a member of a guild or have friends or alternate characters who are in need of rescue, you'll be placing trust in those who are allowed to collect you and they will be notified, either through a message or a guild hub or other hub that you have memberships in. There will be unlockable options to create collectible lanterns that allow players to take in multiple collectible players. Again, later when we talk about crimes, being taken to an area that traps you through trolling or griefing is not something that can happen, although being captured is possible when players are in war or in PvP servers. And of course, if a player is not interested in rescuing someone, they can just decline the quest or hide it to review later. So make sure you only allow people you trust or make an alternate character if you trust no one else. The magic circle will indicate same as a vehicle if the player you are following is moving. And just like vehicles, you can still spawn back at any time. Players can also log back on from being in a collectible lantern similar to a mantle. For however long a player remains offline, or for as long as the collectible lantern is maintained, players can place collected souls at altars, gravestones, and other crafts and mementos like statues. This gives an option to players who know that another player isn't coming back and have an in-game way to remember someone by, as long as the players maintain and protect the objects they created. As usual, the logged off player can log back on at any time, same as a mantle. If the object they were in gets destroyed, the firefly will float freely as if they logged off regularly in the realm in that location. This visual is similar to players who've been dropped off at a location and no longer are carried by another player. Optionally, I would like the fireflies to slowly fly upwards the longer the player is gone. Or maybe the fire visually grows weaker. I sort of like the idea of flying upwards the longer the player is gone though. If the firefly goes up high enough and is instanced out of the world, players would still be able to be rescued if their location is known and returning offline players can still return. In these instances, the firefly would fly downwards back to the ground. If the player never comes back, players could look up at the stars at night and remember their old friends fondly. Maybe their soul is up there with the stars. This wouldn't be the case in hard mode though, which maybe the fire growing weaker might be a better idea. The visuals are just thought experiments for now, as I would hone into the visuals only if this was ever actually going to be turned into a game. But let's talk about hard mode now. 
When you toggle hard mode at character creation, or if the world shard is set to a strict hard mode, meaning all characters are locked into creating a hard mode character, you will need to keep kindling on you as a buffer. Kindling is wood, oil, or other easily burnable resources to keep your core fire burning. While you won't need kindling if you have an active fire source, there is a possibility of monster attacks, wars, or your fire burning out due to the lack of kindling or tinder if it runs out. Your firefly form will only stay alive for as long as you have kindling for it, either externally or in your fire core. Some external examples would be campfires, fireplaces, mantles, candles, forges, and so forth. Items in your fire core could be wood, coal, and oils. You can also craft items strategically that will burn slower, or eat meals that have special qualities to slow the rate down but otherwise your player will permanently die if you run out. In hard mode servers, players can build fires under offline players to keep them alive, and collected souls will need to be placed by active fires to keep them alive in the same way. If you run out of items to use as kindling, you will die. It will leave a pile of ash where you died. The ashes are all of your items as you won't leave any behind if you die in this way. We haven't talked about relics yet, but if yours was on you, it's the only thing that won't burn away. Briefly, a relic is a special item with your character's name engraved on it. It will be left on a pile of ash if you had it with you. Relics decay slower than regular items, but these can still disappear over time if not salvaged by another character. Upon the pile of ash is a weakly flickering firefly. Once a player, NPC, or creature approaches, that firefly will flicker one last time and fade out of existence, or maybe it'll fly away like a spark from a flame. The ash can be collected, stored, and used for crafts, or left to disappear over time. And that's the logging in and out mechanics of spirit relics. This method creates some interesting visuals for logging in and out. Players will always know where a player is and isn't spawning from, all to support a more immersive experience. There is some drama when it comes to trusting friends or strangers with your spirit if you want, and it can even create strong bonds of trust or distrust. Players will decide if the collectible mechanics is what they want to do with their logged off state or not, based on their comfort and community, while the active players can choose if they want to accommodate that or not. While we haven't really talked in depth about character death, this mechanic allows for consideration of friendship or community death as MMORPG players have gone through in their own way many times before, but I've tried to make an in-game world more aware of this by giving in-game practices for it. Hard mode adds an extra challenge and clears inactive players out of the world quicker. This helps players who want to maintain a more active community if they want to join a strict hard mode server, and of course add some challenges and bragging rights otherwise. But that's all for now. What do you think about the logging in and out concepts for spirit relics? If you like this video, check out my Patreon. It's in the description below.